Okay, so so far we have used the digital signatures several times and we know that what we reveal to the network is really the digital signature instead of private key. In this chapter we will understand what is a digital signature, how digital signature is created and how it is used to verify a signature. So what is a digital signature? To understand digital signature let us first talk about our familiar paper and pen signature also called wet signature. We use this signature to sign various types of messages. It can be a will, a property document, a contract or any other type of a statement. Let us take an example of bank check. So when you sign a check to transfer some fund from your bank account to someone else account, what does that mean? It means three things. Authentication, non-repudiation and integrity. Authentication means your identity is known to the receiver. This receiver can be an individual or a system or an application. In this case, that receiver is the banking system. If bank does not recognize the signature, it will reject the check. So bank should be able to identify that individual and authenticate its signature. Non-repudiation means that the signer cannot deny that he has signed the check. And integrity means that the content in the check has not been altered during the course of time. Digital signature also means exactly these three things. Obviously, pen and paper signature heavily rely on the handwriting of individual. The three properties that we discussed, that is authentication, non-repudiation and integrity in case of pen and paper signature, actually assumes that the handwriting of the individual is unique and no one else can copy the signature. Of course, that is not always true and we see the case when someone is able to forge the signature because he is able to copy the exact handwriting of the signer. While pen and paper signature rely on the handwriting of the individual, a digital signature rely on an algorithm to produce a mathematical scheme. Let us understand this in details. You see, any signature has two attributes, private and public. Private attribute is something which is known to the signer only and no one else would know it. It is used to create the signature. Similarly, public attribute is something which is known to everyone and it is used to verify the signature. Now, if you think about pen and paper signature here, private attribute is your own skill to produce that handwriting which is unique to you and the expectation is that no one else will have the same handwriting. And obviously, the public attribute is the symbol that you create in your unique handwriting. Often these symbols are your name or some alphabets of your name. This symbol is public. Anyone can uh, see your signature and verify it by matching with, with your existing signatures. In case of digital signature, these private and public attributes are keys. So private key is known to the signer only and it is used to create the signature and public key is known to everyone and it is used to verify the signature. So let us talk about creation of digital signature and then we will talk about its verification. Digital signature is created with the help of message and private key. So message and private key are the input, then some process is done and the result is a digital signature. For verification, you need digital signature, message and a public key generated from the same private key which generated the digital signature. So in the verification process, digital signature, message and public key is the input, then some process is done and the result is either true or false depending on whether digital signature is valid or invalid. So digital signature is a function of message and private key which means if message is changed, digital signature will also change. This is very different from your pen and paper signature because your pen and paper signature remains same across all the documents. Another point to note is that for verification you don't need private key. You need digital signature created from that private key and a public key created from the same private key. Now this is a bird eye view of the process of generation and verification of digital signature. But if you go in detail there is complex algorithm involved here. This algorithm of generation and verification of digital signature is called the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm or ECDSA. So let us first look into digital signature generation part of ECDSA and then we will talk about its verification. Digital signature is composed of two values commonly called R and S. The first step in the creation of digital signature is to get a random key. 
the value of k does not matter but its randomness is very important if the same value of k is used to produce two signatures on different transactions the signing private key can be calculated and funds can be stolen this k is your temporary private key second step is that out of this temporary private key we create a temporary public key using elliptic curve multiplication we have already discussed in detail about elliptic curve multiplication and how public key is generated from private key we know that public key is a point on elliptic curve the r value of the digital signature is the x coordinate of this temporary public key third step is to calculate the s value of the digital signature using this equation where k is the temporary private key that we created in the first step r as we know is the x coordinate of the temporary public key d is the private key of the signer m is the transaction data or message that the signer wants to sign p is the prime order of the elliptic curve this addition and multiplication that that you are seeing here is not normal addition or multiplication it is elliptic curve addition and elliptic curve multiplication we have already discussed elliptic curve addition and elliptic curve multiplication in earlier chapter similarly this k inverse here is not normal inverse function which may give you decimal values because here we deal with integers it is modular multiplicative inverse of k it's a number such that modulo p of k inverse 1 multiplied by k is 1 if you are confused about this prime order p or elliptic curve addition and multiplication please click on the link in the above corner to go to that chapter now that you have r and s value you got the digital signature so if you see this equation closely you have used transaction data and private key to create digital signature which means that for different transaction data you will get different digital signatures even if you use the same private key in fact we are not even doing addition directly to private key but we are first multiplying this private key to x coordinate of a temporary public key to make it impossible to track back to the private key if you have gone through the earlier chapter you know that contrary to normal multiplication or scalar multiplication you can never track back the multiplier in case of elliptic curve multiplication even if you know the result and one of the value so this equation makes it impossible to get the private key with the help of digital signature so this was all about creation of digital signature now let us discuss the second part of ecdsa which is the verification of digital signature so what does verification really means Verification means that you want to make sure that the digital signature used to sign the transaction was created by same private key which was used to create the public key which you are using for verification. Mathematically it means you solve the equation to get the value p where p is the temporary public key that you created while generating digital signature. R and S are digital signature values. Recall that digital signature is composed of two values R and S. QA is the public key of the signer and M is the transaction data. Now verifier does not have that temporary public key but he has the digital signature and as we know that R value of digital signature is the x coordinate of that temporary public key. So if x coordinate of P is equal to R then verification is successful. So in this chapter we covered ECDSA or elliptic curve digital signature algorithm which is used to create and verify digital signature. We saw that digital signature is created using private key and the transaction data and verification verification is done using digital signature transaction data and the public key. Now that we know what is digital signature and how it is verified it is time to understand the process of p to public key hash or p to pkh this is where you use unlocking script of transaction input to unlock the locking script of transaction output stay tuned and enjoy my code coffee if you now want to move to the next chapter you can click on this card and yes don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way for easy navigation to all chapters visit mycodecoffee.com thank you so much for watching